Hello, this is Jim Van Kosky, Sports Legends of Delaware County Museum, located at 301 Ivan Avenue, Wayne, Pennsylvania, in another one of our monthly telecasts. And again, we're here with Rich Pagano, and we're going to talk about an exciting event called the Sports Legends of Delaware County Museum's Cavalcade of Stars. And we were fortunate enough to have actually 14 individuals that showed up to our luncheon. And we want to explain a little bit about our luncheon and who came and the significance they have as far as sports in Delaware County. Uh, we usually start off our luncheon with our logo, and you'll see that on the screen. And it's, at some point in time, maybe at the end of this session, we'll go over what our symbols happen to mean, like the SLDC and everything else that, that goes along with that, the colors that are representative. And then uh, another image that we had on the large screen was our title sponsor. And we want to thank Brandywine Realty Trust for helping us out because, you know, Rich, putting on these events requires quite a bit of money, and it's nice to have some help along the way, and Brandywine Realty Trust was able to help us out in this particular venture. Uh, our first guest was the person who gave our opening remarks, Joe Crawford, and you had the pleasure of interview interviewing Joe. Uh, Rich, can you tell us a little bit about Joe? Yeah, Joe is uh, an interesting guy. He's still, he's not on the floor working as a referee in the NBA, but he's still working uh, in the NBA and uh, still employed by the NBA. But what I found interesting about Joe, and I was talking to him, that at one time uh, there were 60 officials, referees in the NBA, and 10 of them were from Delaware County, and, uh, or the Philadelphia area. Four of those 10 went to the same high school, and that's Cardinal Harrow, where Joe, uh, Joe was one of the first. Jake O'Donnell was from Clifton Heights. And uh, he was probably the first of the NBA officials, along with Lou Bonder. But, um, yeah, four, four NBA officials from the same high school. And we were talking about that and uh, how that came about. And uh, Joe is a, a funny guy. He, uh, he had us all laughing at that luncheon with his talk. And, uh, yeah, he, he was really interesting to talk to. You know, we like to say that we're local, but we're national, and nothing points that out to a greater extent than the amount of NBA officials. Yeah. And Joe, I think, is probably the, the most prominent, or yeah. has been. I mean, he's officiated more NBA finals than anybody else. I think uh, he was selected 30 years in a row to do the finals, and he brought a piece of memorabilia, this jacket here, is a jacket that the NBA gives those officials that are selected to do the finals. And he right. did 30 of them, and this happens to be the NBA yeah. finals in 2002 that he wore. So it was great having Joe give the opening remarks. Oh, yeah, him. without a doubt. That's a great addition to our museum, too, because he comes from a, a very official-oriented family, you know, with his father, Shag Crawford, uh, being a baseball umpire and doing the World Series, and his brother Jerry, who also, um, I guess they, they both, correct me if I'm wrong, but when uh, Veteran Stadium opened, Jerry did the first game there with. When Veteran the, Stadium opened, Shag did the first, first game. Right. Behind the plate. And then when Vet Stadium closed, closed it was Jerry, Jerry his did, son. Be, yeah. which is unbelievable. Yeah. Really. We're, we're writing a book, and one of the couple pages in the book is dedicated to the Crawford family. Right. Uh, second, moving on, we had Shannon Grady. And I'm going to ask you to tell us a little bit about Shannon since you were her teacher back in the elementary school days. Yeah. When you're a teacher, and as you know too, Jimmy, you, you taught and coached, uh, there are some athletes, some kids that have that mental thing going on that puts them in a class of their own, you know. Some of them may all have uh, almost equal physical ability, but it's uh, what's going on up in the head, the attitude, and she was one of the most determined kids I ever had in my 36 years of teaching at, at Westbrook Park there in the Upper Darby School District. And uh, she was just mentally tough. And you could see it when she was in second, third, and fourth grade. 
And then, of course, Upper Darby lost out because after elementary school, she moved to Aston and ended up being this outstanding track and cross-country star at Sun Valley High School and went to the University of Florida on a full track scholarship. And um, she's still running today. She had been at the World Championships when we had this event, um, and she finished fifth. Out of well, all she's a triathlete now, in, and, and in the that goes yeah. along with what you're saying. You have to be mentally tough oh, to be a triathlete, definitely. that's for sure. But you know what was interesting about her, too, that I didn't realize? She works with all the Olympic athletes from Bermuda and uh, in all sports and uh, because she has a, a degree in physiology from Florida. Just an amazing girl. She's been a, a, a wonderful addition to our Sports Legends of Delaware County Museum. We've had her at a, as a guest more than once. Right. So we'd like to thank Shannon, that's for sure. And then next we had Bob Rigby. Yeah, well, <laughs> Rigby. Um, Let me say this. You <laughs> might not want to say this, but Bob Rigby and Rich were roommates in college. Yeah, I, I got to know Bob uh, as a sophomore at Ridley. So we went through high school together, and then we both uh, – ended up at East Stroudsburg, and uh, we were roommates, and he just really blossomed up there and became the number one goalie in soccer in the entire country. He was first team All-American and um, drafted in the first round uh, by the Philadelphia Adams, and they went on to win the North American uh, Soccer League Championship. He was the best goalie in the league. He set all kind of records for goaltending. and. Um, it's just an amazing story. Uh, and the indeed. image that we have on the screen is uh, him being the first soccer player that made the cover of Sports yeah. Illustrated. Sports Illustrated started uh, 20 years before that. And the most popular sport in the world, they never had a soccer player on the cover of the magazine, not until 1973. And here Bob gets on the cover before Pele, before some of the great soccer players in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it was during that championship game that season when they, uh, they won. And I know he likes, he says he's, every day he still gets photographs of the cover of Sports Illustrated asking him to autograph it. To sign it, yeah. So uh, sign it's, back. It's, they, people don't forget, do they? No, he's uh, amazing. And then we had Andy Matter. Yeah, Andy Matter, as I said at the event, he's the best wrestler ever to come out of Delaware County. He was a state champion. What I found interesting, his senior year at Upper Darby, when he won the state championship, because the year before, he lost at the states. He went to the finals. But the, nobody even scored a point on, on him in the dual meets during the season. And then he ends up at Penn State on a wrestling scholarship and wins two NCAA championships. Just um, amazing wrestler. He, you know, there's nine other Delaware County wrestlers that have won state championships, but he went on and won two national championships in, in college. And Andy was nice enough to bring his awards with right. him. Right. His uh, trophy that he won for winning the high school state cha championship. Right. And then two of the NCAA awards that he received for winning the, the Nas National Collegiate Athletic Association. And I thought you were going to get me on um, Andy and, and uh, what else, the other award he got at Penn State. Well, he was wrestler of the decade, but he also, um, and I know you always like to say this, he was the, the male athlete of the year beating out Franco Harris, Lydell Mitchell, some of the All-American football players. They gave him the male athlete of the year. You know, sometimes it, it, it's tried and true that we can talk about our athletes and they're more recognizable by mentioning the people that they beat out yeah. than people understanding the accomplishments It kind of really themselves. puts it in perspective, you know. He was outstanding. And then we had Augie Pentelis, which is, there's a similarity <laughs> there a little bit between uh, Andy and Augie in terms of Upper Darby and... Yeah, um, Augie wasn't the best student in, in high school, but uh, as... The coach, Art McCall, had told me, and I, I made that clear at, the, at our event, that Augie, before he ever got involved in boxing, he was an outstanding wrestler. So his sophomore year, he went to the States and got to the final. Uh, I guess he finished fourth at States as a 10th grader. And then he quit school after that. And uh, Art McCall always said he, he would have been Upper Darby's first state champion. But um, he just wasn't much of a student. And then he got involved 
at the age of 23, he started boxing and became uh, quite a drawing card and one of the most exciting boxers in, in Philadelphia. Fought at the Spectrum, fought down in Atlantic City, and uh, but he had some, you know, personal problems that uh, caused him not to to get to that world championship fight, which. Uh, we're, we're going to be celebrating our 20th anniversary next year, and one of the first guests that we ever had was Augie. Right. Back in Chester, Museum of the History of Delaware County, and Augie brought his robe, his gloves, yeah, shoes, shoes, trunks. Trunks. That we uh, and we, we, we put them on display, and then about 10 years later, he comes back and says, Jim, I, I need my stuff back. <laughs> Thank goodness we still had it. I said, what do you mean? What do you mean, Augie? He said, I'm coming out of retirement. Now, Augie's 70 years old yeah. at the time, but he wanted to be the oldest professional boxer as far as the Ripley's Believe It or Not. Yeah, Damon Feldman was going to promote that. And uh, uh, did you want to mention also that you were going to promote uh, Augie? In a, in a, well, we'll, we'll save that for a, <laughs> for a later date. But Augie is somebody that you just enjoy being around. I know Brad now did a video of him yes. that we have on our website. And it's, he's just a joy. He's, he's, he just generates so much and energy. We should mention his food cart is still at the uh, courthouse in media. <laughs> if uh, people ever want to stop by and see him, he's there some days uh, working the uh, food cart. And then we went to Ernie Beck. Yeah, and Ernie. Ernie Beck is one of the nicest individuals you ever want to meet in your entire life. Uh, I, I, I had an embarrassing moment somewhat at the event when I asked him if he brought his ring with him. Do you remember when he said that? At that point in time, he said, Jim, it's funny you should ask because I lost my <laughs> ring yesterday and I have no idea where I put it. The ring we're talking about is his 1956 world champion NBA ring right. when he played for the Philadelphia Warriors, teammate of Paul Arison. Tom Gola. Tom Gola. Yeah. So m many uh, Philadelphia-related areas. but. But Ernie, uh, Ernie, uh, if you're viewing this, uh, hopefully you, you found your ring, and I think we'll give you a call today or tomorrow to see how yeah, you're doing. Yeah, I actually doing. thought he might have been joking about that, but he really lost it, and you're asking about <laughs> yeah, the ring. Yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> oh. But Ernie Beck, again, was uh, one of the legendary basketball players from Philadelphia, and he made his home in Delaware County in Havertown for years and years. So he's kind of an adopted son for us. Though. Yeah, many of the people that we have were born in, outside of Delaware County, but we still claim them because in many cases they will have lived in Delaware County for 20, 30, 40 years, or 50 years or more. Well, I was in 50 years. Yeah. yeah I mean. So uh, we feel as though if they can adopt us, we can adopt them as well. And Ernie Beck is one of those. Yeah. And now you have an indigenous Delaware County in John Cartwright. Oh, yeah. John Cartwright, uh, the pride of Sharon Hill, just an outstanding all-around athlete at Sharon Hill in football, basketball, and baseball. And then um, he, he told me he could have signed as a catcher. Uh, and I'm, re I'm not remembering what team it was, a major league team, that wanted to sign him right out of high school. But uh, he ended up going to the Naval Academy and just had a great career as a quarterback and uh, broke nine or ten of Roger Stallbach's uh, quarterback records at, at the Naval Academy. And a lot of people don't realize he, he did some coaching, too. Uh, Jerry Falwell's uh, college university in Lynchburg, Virginia. He was the second head coach there for about three years. He coached their football team. But uh, he now is a minister, of course, in, in uh, Ridley Township there. But just he's one of the without a doubt, one of the great athletes ever to come out of the county. No um, doubt about it. And he was he's another one of those individuals that was nice enough to bring us a piece of his memorabilia. We have his jersey yeah. uh, that he wore in Annapolis, yeah. which is awfully nice. And another item I would like to talk about, you, you, you said he could have signed as a catcher yeah. in Major League Baseball. It seems like Delaware County has quite a few catchers that uh, we have that reputation. Mike Sosha, Ben Davis, ben Davis yeah. uh, Herbert Rensky, another Sharon Hill grad. So we have our share of really outstanding, not just local catchers, but national catchers. And it would be interesting to see if uh, John Cartwright would have continued yeah. that, if, you know, how he would have made out. But then he, again, right after Annapolis, he served uh, 
in Vietnam. Right, right, yeah. And um, I asked him about, uh, I believe in the interview, uh, about playing pro football, but, um, you know, he had that responsibility of, of, of uh, being in the Navy for five years, you know, and uh, after that. Uh, but I, I really believe he could have been a, an NFL quarterback. He was that good. So if he's certainly going to be on the Mount Rushmore of high school athletes as far as Delaware County is concerned. Oh, yeah. Not just one sport, but football, baseball, right. basketball. And, Anything and you, you want to do. We, well, we know about, it, especially you, coaching, uh, you can end up playing in the minors for years and never get up to the majors. It's a tough thing to break into. Uh, oh, very difficult. You know. Very good, difficult. We always uh, talk about, I, I, the funny story is uh, my friend Joe Grace played in the minors for five or six years. And he comes home and somebody said, Joe, what are you doing home? He said, well, they, they didn't play me where I wanted to play. So where did you, you want to play? He said, I wanted to play in the <laughs> major leagues and they didn't want to play me there. So I think that says it all about yeah. modern. But then you have another individual by DeFelice who went to have a pitcher Haverford, and he spent about nine years in the minors before he eventually made it to the major leagues. So uh, it, it, it takes a lot of gut, grit, and determination in order to do that. Yeah. And then you have Carl Gershbach. Yeah, Carl uh, Gershbach. It's, it's, we match him up with John Cartwright, which is interesting because they're high school careers. Right. Uh, Carl Gershbach played at Swarthmore High School, and, and, of course, they played Sharon Hill. So those two played against each other during that time period. But Carl Gershbach was uh, quite a football player and actually went to Duke for a year right out of Swarthmore. And uh, as he said in the interview, he said, I didn't get to class very often. <laughs> he, so he ended up leaving Duke and then ended up at Westchester State College at the time and was uh, an All-American there. And um, I'm trying to remember if he was drafted or signed a free agent contract with the Minnesota Vikings. But as a linebacker, he played seven years in the NFL. He, he was quite a football player. Uh, and one of those years he played with the Philadelphia Eagles, yes, correct? Yes, yes he did. One year he played with the Eagles. I guess he played with maybe four different teams during those seven years. But um, yeah, I don't. I wanted to get those two together, hopefully at the at our luncheon to to talk about the high school game. But uh, we had a lot. And of there's going always on. some amusing stories because my wife graduated the same year that Carl graduated from Westchester, and my okay. wife happened to be a cheerleader. And, and she said, Carl, I, I, I was a cheerleader when you were a player. She said, well, that's unusual because, you know, when, when I signed, my wife never really was that interested in me playing. And when I told her when I signed professional contract and I said I had to go to camp, my wife said, well, aren't you a little too old to be going to camp? <laughs> she, she, she didn't understand the whole concept of, of, of NFL football camp. Right, right. So it was an amusing story. We, we both got a kick out of that. And here's another uh, individual, Jim Watson, who's certainly not indigenous to Delaware County. No. But he's lived in Delaware County, I mean, since the late 1970s anyway. And he is uh, a real Delaware County influence as far as the sport of ice hockey is concerned. Yeah, with Ice Works there in Aston, he and his brother Joe uh, started that, uh, that uh, ice hockey rink. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting. A lot of the flyers from the those Cup, uh, Stanley Cup teams, they've stayed in the area. They didn't go back to Canada where they were from. Some settled in South Jersey, uh, Watsons and, and Ed Van Imp and Don Seleski and all settled in Delaware County. But Jim Watson comes to a lot of events and um, a great guy. He's another one of those adopted sons that, uh, that like you said, he adopted this area. We adopted him. And... Um, very engaging too. He, I love talking to him. He's very upbeat and uh, and he uh, he likes the Delaware County area. He's he, you can tell. <laughs> well, that's great because yeah. I originally his brother Joe was going to be on our roster of guests, and then Joe found out that he had a a wedding to go to. Oh, so yeah. so Jim was first and foremost, and he helped us out because we wanted ice hockey to be representative. We're not a great ice hockey county matter of right. fact what our first uh player to play in the national hockey league we do have his stick, stick in, in the minor league jersey 
Ryan Mulhern. Ryan Mulhern. Yeah, yeah. from Havertown. Uh. So it was nice to have um, the Flyers, Jim Watson, and his brother Joe yeah. were on our side as well. Yeah. And then we went to Rich Westcott. Oh, and Rich, Rich Westcott has been around Delaware County a long time. You almost think he's from Delaware County, but he's not. He, he, he grew up in the city and went to Penn Charter uh, but, uh, and Drexel. Well, he's written yeah. 26 books. books. And we'll have to have a whole show on Rich. We'll probably be able to get him here at one point in time. Right. And then we went on to Eddie Swain. Eddie Swain uh, brought his Mr. Biddy. <laughs> sports, we talked about Sports Illustrated with Bob Rigby. Eddie Swain was in Sports Illustrated as far as when 1964, he was voted the, the best Biddy basketball player in the entire world. Yeah. Eddie always likes to say, not country, we, we won the international tournament. Uh, so we're very proud of, of that he was able to be with us as well. And then we had Mickey Morandini. And Mickey Morandini, well, lot of, well, is another person who has adopted Delaware County. Uh, yes. He's n now living in the His kids Garnet school. Valley School District. He had children or boys that played at Garnet Valley High School, too. And he's uh, played for that 1993 favorite Phillies team. He made the all-star team, had an unassisted triple play. But you know uh, what I asked him about? The 1988 Olympics. He was on the Olympic team. I did not know that. Yes, and uh, they won a gold medal. And he was very upset that they took baseball out of the Olympics, and he's hoping it gets back in again. Well, it is back in the ne next time. This For in Japan. 2020. Okay. Yeah, it is back in. Uh, and then um, we're, we're rushing along a little bit because we're, when we start talking about our athletes, <laughs> sometimes we digress and uh, we have to get back. Now, here's Bobby Shantz. No. Oh. Special honor to have Bobby Shantz. Now, Bobby Shantz is not a Delaware County, but we adopt him anyway. Right. Be because that uh, he's been so supportive. He was a very friendly uh, individual with Mickey Vernon. And then when Mickey Vernon passed in 2008, Bobby's been, been coming to our events yeah. as well. And we showed a video of the 1952 World Series. Bobby just celebrated his 94th birthday. He's the oldest living, most valuable player. And in the 1952 All-Star Game, he struck out Jackie Robinson, Whitey Lockman, Stan Musial, in the one inning that he pitched. Uh, a national treasure, national treasure. Were you correct in saying he had never seen that film before, too? Yeah, yeah. When, when he, you and that's one, on I, and I think that's the relevancy of our organization, because we do things that are first. Yeah. And I think we do things to enhance the sports world of Delaware County, and not just Delaware County, but the state of Pennsylvania and the nation as well. Yeah. And then we had a, a special... Uh, Championship hat brought to us, made by James May. That oh, we yeah. put on display. <laughs> and we got to go back to football, but this was one of the more uh, intriguing exhibits that we're having, and we're getting a lot of uh, feedback on this, and it's positive because James May graduated from St. James in 1960. 60, right. And I asked him, I said, Junior? Nickname. I said, how many Mummers costumes have you created? He said, over 50,000. Oh, wow. Over 50,000 Mummers costumes James May has created. And we have this championship hat, one that he created For on Kelsey, display. Uh, yeah, Jason Kelsey. Jason Kelsey, who gave that unbelievable <laughs> speech at, at when, the, when the Eagles won the Super Bowl and uh, was wearing all the garb from the Mummers parade, you know. Uh, and, and then in the, uh, our final closing remarks were given by Frieda Gibbs. And Frieda Gibbs was just inducted into the Cabrini College Hall of Fame. Right. And there's uh, now a statue that's going to be erected in honor of Frieda. And we had the Jennifer Fredakis Petrie bring the maquette of that statue. Right. And I think we, we might even be viewing that on the screen. So that wrapped up our Cavalcade of Stars. It's the second one we have. We seem like uh, we're going to have a ritual now that every other year we'll be doing one of these Cavalcade of Stars because they have been so well received. And it's interesting to note that all these individuals, you know, they don't ask for anything. They come without, there's no cost to us. Uh, it's just wonderful to have them in our midst. Yeah, it was very yeah. successful and plus it brings people into our museum too. That 
maybe have never seen it before, and uh, I thought it was a great day. And this is Jim Van Kosky reminding you, if you want to see some of the memorabilia that these great athletes brought, come to uh, 301 Ivan Avenue, Wayne, Pennsylvania, 19087. Uh, we're open from 8 to 4, Monday through Friday, and on most Saturdays uh, from 11 to 1.30. But you might want to call in regard to the Saturdays. And I think we have our number on the screen, 610-909-4919. But before you come on Saturday, you, you might just want to touch base with the people that are be working on Saturdays to make sure that it's open. And Rich knows what I'm talking about because some, it's, it's hard. It's hard uh, to get volunteer. We're all volunteer. There's not one paid person in our entire organization. So get the volunteers out there. Sometimes uh, they have other things to do, like weddings. Well, and usually our parties. Our curator Jimmy <laughs> is usually there on Saturdays for for a few hours. But uh, yeah, it's very worthwhile, and uh, you want to visit our museum. Okay, thank you very much for joining us, and hopefully uh, we'll be back next month with an, another different program. And it's strange that we sometimes we don't know exactly what program we're, we're going to be doing ourselves because it's so recent. So the information you're getting on Studio 21 TV, believe me, is about as recent as information as you can get. Yeah. So signing off, this is Jim Van Kosky with Rich Pagano. And join us again next month when we uh, create another fine show for you.